You're listening to the B&H Photography Podcast. For over 40 years, B&H has been the professional source for photography, video, audio, and more. For your favorite gear, news, and reviews, visit us at bnh.com or download the B&H app to your iPhone or Android device. Now here's your host, Alan Weitz. Greetings and salutations from our state-of-the-art broadcast studios in the heart of New York, New York, a town so nice they named it twice. Our guests today are Jordan Shapps, former director of photography at New York Magazine, a curator, author, and professor at the School of Visual Arts, and Anne Rong, a photographer, filmmaker, and living proof that Jordan's class at SVA is worth attending. Full disclosure, I am a semi-graduate of SVA. I left about two weeks before the end of my final semester to go out and seek work. Uh, But more importantly, when I was a freelance shooter, Jordan gave me a slew of assignment work, including the only cover story of a city other than New York to appear on the pages and cover of New York Magazine, and that was the town of Baltimore. Baltimore. And we had a great time. Um, Today's topic is... From classroom to real world, how young photographers are succeeding in a new environment. And to tell us, how long has it been since you graduated, and what have you been up to? And, I, and, and be, in case you forget, I know that you've, your, your work has appeared in the pages of uh, New York Times. So uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, and then we'll cut into our topic. Well, uh, thanks for having me here today. Uh, I've been out of school for about three years now. I graduated in 2012, and... Right out of school, I had an artist in residency lined up in Boston, Massachusetts. I was helping run an arts organization and just curating shows and making things happen while also working my own work. And since I've moved back in 2013, it's been just constantly hustling, finding projects to do, working on my own projects, and just simply staying focused on what I want and what I need and to continue making work that I love. So for me, it's been a very long process and it's gonna, it's still a long winding road and I'm far from anywhere I wanna be. But right now I'm moving in a direction that I like. And so for me right now, it's, uh, it's working as much as I can while also making time for my own work. Now question for you, working as a photographer today is, vastly different from back in the day when I was freelance, when you could just basically go through the trade journals, look at magazines, find out who art directed it, who is the director of photography, and actually pick up the phone and have them answer on the other side and go and sit down and show them a portfolio and talk about things. The world has changed. Photography has a whole different value. What are some of the tools that you're using to to get yourself noticed? Because again, the old the old adage was that a a, a professional or freelance photographer was somebody with two Nikon's and a spouse with a full time job and benefits. Um, n- now it's changed a lot. Now it's anybody with you know basically a photographic device and a Wi Fi signal. So. How do you handle that? And Jordan, feel free to jump in because oh, you, you've you've seen this transition big going, time yeah. from back then to now. So. Well, uh, I think the biggest thing is actually a lot of stuff that I learned in Jordan's class with Jordan teaching us about the human touch, the ability to communicate with another person and creating a connection where you meet a stranger and all of a sudden you have an elevator pitch ready and you make a friend. Friend turns out to be the photo director of some magazine or some photo editor and all of a sudden you're in the door and you're meeting and you're having your opportunity to show your work and Nowadays, it's that opportunity that you're waiting for and, you know, opportunities, luck and being prepared. So when it comes, you're ready to go. Yeah. See, even even though there's so many uh, newer, more modern technical avenues and outlets and expressions, uh, it still do- it still boils down to whether it's most likely digital or in some cases film for whatever reason. It still boils down to uh, graduating students have to get a start and you get a start in editorial however diminishing that may be and you get your start editorially not on the phone today I mean people you know make a call you know phone Um, (laughs) it's through email contact and I'm a I I believe in the notion the structure the look and the content of an email as as the Torah it's it's just it's the way to get in and um, also, I'm, I, I'll, the semester starts today, 
and I thank you for any good thing you have to say to me. And also, God bless us both if I did anything of value to you. But uh, I'm going to tell my students, I'm going to open the lecture by saying, if you want to work in this business, you'll do whatever, whatever I tell you in the next two sentences. It's not more complicated than that. And as Anne Rong said, it's about building relationships for a simple reason. And it's funny to look at you in the studio because um, I can almost use you as, a, as an example. I, I, I loved your work. That's the key thing. But I, I looked at you and I liked you. And I said to myself, can I sleep at night if I give this guy an assignment? And I said, yes. And I, I, even, I even said to myself, and I use this, if I were going to, God forbid, be in a free-falling elevator, would I want to be alone with this guy or this woman? Would they say, oh, my God, we're going to die. We're crazy. Or would they say, uh, I got an idea. You hold this. You hold that. I'll stand on your shoulders. I think there's a door there. I think let's both <laughs> press this knob here. Maybe we'll die, but we'll die trying. We'll die with our boots on. You know? And you, you gave great evidence of that, and so do you. I'd hire you in a heartbeat. Thanks, Jordan. <laughs> I also should add that one of the nice things when you have a trust, and by the way, this is I, this doesn't matter then or now. Once you get the trust of, of, of uh, an art director or a designer or whoever it is that's hiring, once you get their trust, that's when they let you go and play. And that's one of the good things about the relationship that we had is that you gave me a script and you basically said go play. Absolutely. And I was allowed to just open my eyes and go and wander for two, three days and come back with stuff that made everybody happy. Well, the deal is, and I think I told you this before, I gave you guidelines and you exceeded those guidelines on your own, which was remarkable, which was remarkable. And that in those days we would go into a dark room and project film, 35, two and a quarter, six, seven, whatever, on a projector for the boss. Right. And the boss would say, what is that? Why? And the editor would say, well, that's the blah, blah that so-and-so's right about. And then when I'd finish the presentation, I'd say, look, Alan took a couple of things on his own. Can I show them to you? And he'd say, sure. And I showed him something. He said, wow, that is gorgeous. And the editor would chime in and say, well, the author isn't really writing about that. And the editor, Ed Kosner, legendary Ed Kosner, Time, uh, Newsweek, Esquire, New York Magazine, New York Daily News, he would say, get her to write two sentences. We're not having that picture not running it. Well, thank you for joining us today. This has been oh, a great. I'm, I'm, now my ego is struck very well. Thank Good. you. <laughs> do, do, am, am I getting a cash or a there check? There you go. Okay. Yes, yes. Gift card. Good gift um, card. <laughs> <laughs> so, Okay. How has that changed now? The near students are coming in, and the challenge is still there. You still have to get the attention of whoever it is that's buying pictures. So it really hasn't changed much. And from what you're saying, it's basically about still building relationships. But the vehicles are different right now. And, and, and t let's talk about that a little bit. I mean, right now, you, you go out and you shoot pictures for a magazine. It used to be that, or, or, or a book or something. Now we have so many other avenues. How do you approach them? And, and even better, how do you monetize them? Because, again, pictures, the value of photographs has gone down, unfortunately, tremendously. As much as people it's, value photographs, they don't want to pay for them. And let's face it, you know, go into your doctor or your dentist or your car mechanic and say, listen, I have a problem, but if you take care of it, I can get you a credit line. I'll be happy to tell people that you're really, really good, and I'll make sure that you get more patients and more people bringing your car in. See how far you get an oil change or, or a root canal based on that. And that's what's coming down to photography quite often is that, you know, they're trying to say, but just getting your name out there is, is value enough. And obviously, I tried feeding my kids credit lines, and they just were never satisfied with them. So <laughs> how, 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 do we, how, how do we deal with that? Because that, that's a big thing today. Everyone's got a camera and everyone's really good. And there's a zillion competitors. Well, I will, I will, I will tell you something that is, has a downside and an upside. And that is once someone gets a high quality smartphone in their hand and they take pictures, they suddenly devalue the fact that you might need more than five seconds of their time to take, them, take their picture mm. for the cover of X magazine. So a lot, but on the other side, certain components of the business have not changed, and I'll, and I'll, I can tell you what they are very simply. Talent is paramount. You've got to have talent. You have to have enormous talent. Luckily, at School of Visual Arts, that isn't a problem. Everyone who puts their work before me has talent. Also, I love what. What are you calling the name of this segment? 
the tenth of it. Classroom to real world, how young photographers are succeeding in a new environment. I have about four alternatives if you want to hear okay. those. No, two. no, I love that. I think okay. because it very much parallels when I was invited to have this class created for me. And I said to the head of the department, I said, can I name the class? And she said, yes. And I said, I'd like to call the class Making the Transition from the Classroom to the Real World. So we're right on sync with go. that. But certain things are set in concrete, and that is the talent is paramount, number one. Then comes the likability factor. It's a tough world out there. It's a fast world out there. People are not going to suffer people they don't like. And likability is not, oh, how good looking you are. Oh, that's a Prada shirt. It's what, what, what kind of connection do I have with this person? Can I send this person to uh, Gracie Mansion to photograph the mayor? or do a video on the mayor, it's, it, it, it's how does this person comport themselves? And then the other thing, which I, is the hardest bite of reality, is the art only represents about a third of it. The second third is business, and the third third is networking. And where those three things overlap, that's called career. Ooh. That's it. That's clear. Yeah. That's and I'll tell you, I, I, I'm a working person, too. I'm pushing my book. I'm working on the next two products. In my briefcase, I have my book, about 270 business cards. I have leave-behind cards. You know, I'm prepared. I, and, and as Alan Rong said, I don't know who I'm going to run into in the elevator right. who might be carrying something and say, oh, look at that. That's a picture that was taken by Ansel Adams. Isn't that great? Are you into Ansel Adams? Well, so am I. I mean, blah, blah, blah. Let's exchange cards and talk next week. Also, I'll, I'm, I have had too much coffee, or just enough coffee. <laughs> Would you like some more? <laughs> something that you said is not <clears throat> equal in the uh, photography world. And you said if you go to your mechanic, that, that, that's no matter how good your deal is or how your service is, that's not going to network anyway. That's not true in the photography field. First of all, you meet the nicest people in the photography world. They want to help you. They're not out to get you. And then the second thing is that they all know each other. Mm -hmm. So if you go to talk to Kathy Ryan, the uh, photography director of the Sunday Times New York Magazine, uh, the Sunday Times Magazine section, you don't know if she's going to have lunch with Elizabeth Biondi, who's the visual creative director of The New Yorker, and Jody Kwan, who has my job at New York Magazine. And Kathy just might say, you know, I saw a photographer today, fantastic work, not right for me, but you should see him. It's you know it's a you simple. Ne you never know how it links up. No, no. One thing leads to another. Exactly, yep. and people want to help you. No one is out to say to you, "Oh yes, there's a uh, call for photographers on uh, 289th Street <laughs> at 4 a.m." They don't do that. They're, they're decent people, and they want to help you. As you were just saying that, something came to my mind that. Um, for a couple of years, I did uh, some annual reports for Parker Hannafin, which they're into everything from food supplying to aircraft to uh, brake pads for Boeing jets. And I got the assignment because the, the CEO, uh, Mr. Parker, was a boating nut, and I did a lot of boating photography. He liked the way I photographed rowing boats. Oh, yeah. And his whole thing was, if this guy could take a great picture of a rowing boat, what could he do with a brake pad? <laughs> Mm -hmm. or, or a Concorde sitting on, on a tarmac being loaded up with, you know, fresh provisions. And, yeah, that's, it's funny how funny little things go on like that where you don't think of yourself as being specifically a, a type of photographer and all of a sudden you're picked up for something else. Mm -hmm. Totally mm -hmm. unrelated to that. So, yeah, like you said, you run to somebody in the elevator or something, somebody sees a picture or something of that sort. It's a, everything's a chance. So that's how I approach it. It's very important to know who you are, what you're doing, and what you can help other people do. And, yeah, you know, one thing leads to another. You never know what's gonna, you're, where you're going to end up. Yeah. Also, how, I kind of know this a little. I'd love to hear you say it. How did you establish and apparently cement a relationship with the New York Times? <laughs> well, uh, two years ago, I, became, uh, I was working for a photographer uh, named Bon Duke. And as Bond's assistant uh, and studio manager, I helped him on a lot of shoots. And w him and I developed such a good relationship that at some point, him and I, uh, he invited me to his birthday party. And at a birthday party, you know, uh, photographers have photographer friends, creative friends. And at the party, I met a young woman who she started talking to me, asked me what I did. I told her I worked for Bond. And then all of a sudden, she tells me, oh, I'm a, f a photo editor at Real Simple. Um, I'd love to see your work. And, you know, 
this is before I, I was even trying to pitch anything. This is before I even tried to like sell herself that I'm a good photographer or anything. She just simply said, well, you're a young photographer and you're working for my friend who is a great photographer. So you, you can't be half bad. So let me take a look. And so we developed a relationship, uh, real simple. They're a great magazine, but I, my style is not really for them f for most of what the magazine is. But eventually that photo editor, she left Real Simple and she called me and she goes, Anurang, I'm going to the New York Times. Do you want to shoot for me? And I said, um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> why would I not want to? <laughs> so uh, why, why should I? <laughs> Convince me. <laughs> Who so, was that? <laughs> uh, her name's Eve Lyons. Okay. She's also an SVA grad. So, uh, so the thing is, um, with her, she saw potential in what I did and she, she was like, hey, I see what you can do and here's a direction that I want you to take. So my first assignment was actually shooting for uh, the vows, the vows section. Oh, sure, yeah. And so she, she, said, she said, I love the way you capture romance. I love the way you capture like life happening as it is. Now go photograph this mermaid wedding. <laughs> and, so, and some brake pads and some brake pads yeah you know so so my first assignment was on a boat on the hudson river photographing a wedding <laughs> and so uh you know at this point i'm thinking to myself i'm fortunate enough to be working i'm happy to be working i'm happy to be i'm shooting for one of the best publications in the world and what what am i going to bring to this uh, you know i gave it my all i every time Every time I go out to shoot something, I give it my all because I'm not well, I'm not going to risk not giving my best to, you know, just because I'm not getting paid a lot or whatever. I'm every time somebody hires me, I give it my best to give my quality a better um, you know, my quality is going to be a better understood quality where people value it more. So, you know, I did a good job and she loved it and she's like, "Let me get you on more stuff." So, when you're given the opportunity, you got to take it, and you can't mess up. That's the one thing with photography. Like Ted Williams said with baseball, you can hit three out of ten times, and you'd be an amazing baseball player. In regular life, you can't miss at all. It's you got to be a one one thousand hitter. You can't like miss at all. So every time I go out, I got to give it my all. And so when she saw me on my first assignment, she said, "You did a great job. I want you to shoot more." And eventually. We developed a good relationship further, you know, we talk and she like critiques me every now and then, lets me know what she's looking for more in my photos. And you know, that's the other thing. You have to be able to take criticism and take it and move on with where you wanna go with your work. Take it constructively. Take it constructively, because mm -hmm. like, yeah. I've seen a lot of young photographers, they come out and they're really defensive about their work, they're really angry that like somebody doesn't understand them. Ooh. Well, the thing is, if you're not being understood, you need to create a better understanding. Oof, yes. Absolutely. So, so, yeah, you know, just started doing that, and eventually um, other publications started calling and, like, started making friends, and one thing leads to another, and, you know, I'm, I'm working to a level where I'm not super comfortable, but I'm surviving. Okay. okay. In a way, this is both a an, an delightful story and a disappointing story. The uh, delightful story is, you, do you know whose footsteps you're following in, in the vows section? Ed Keating. Yes, exactly. Ed, the great, 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 great photojournalist, Ed Keating, was the first man assigned to bring art and uh, photo art to the Vows section. Right, and right. And he's legendary, legendary photographer, probably someone I admire above many, many, many other photographers. The disappointing thing is that I would like to take the credit for having brought you to the New York Times, <laughs> and obviously I didn't. And, uh, you know, I'll have to spend the day dealing with that. And, and let, me, let me ask you a question now. Your, your description is a photographer and a filmmaker, and, and f it, it's, it's becoming more and more a, a, of the same thing, I believe, as far as if you're going to be a photographer these days, correct me if I'm wrong, you also really have to understand motion pictures and moving pictures and be able to shoot video, which most the most basic point and shoot, and the, every phone shoots high-def video. Um, how integral is that to what you're doing right now? Uh, and do you think it's going to be you know, uh, eclipsing your still work? I think for me, I've always been interested in film and making videos. So it's sort of something that I've been doing side by side since I first started photography. Is that the norm for most people in your bracket right now? People who no. are your, your contemporaries? Well, amongst my contemporaries, I have a lot of friends who are like, oh man, video, this is like the biggest mountain I'm ever going to have to climb. 
And I've already embraced it before I even started shooting photography, actually. I started shooting video first. And so when I started doing it, I kind of, for me, my work has, I would say, like a cinematic feel to it. I try to tell a story all within one picture and use what I have in the picture to kind of move along the story. But that's how I see. So when I shoot, I use that as my starting point of creating a picture and creating a story. And so a lot of my peers have trouble with it because a lot of them don't understand more than just what a picture is. And a moving picture is way more complicated than a regular picture. Like, I, I have the biggest admiration for a lot of my friends who are documentary filmmakers. I would never be able to do that. Because uh, documentary filmmakers, you have to have a lot of patience. I, I can say, you know, I'm a documentary photographer here and there, but as a documentary photographer, I have chances to take a break and really get to know my subject and like have ability to just blend in. But as a documentary filmmaker, you're sitting there the whole time with the camera on, just waiting for something to happen. So for me, most of my film work is actually narrative film, and I write scripts and I create stories based on things that I experience and things that I see in the real world. So it's, it's this thing where you kind of have to find your way into it or kind of understand how to do it because it's, a very, it's, it's, it's more demanding now. If you can sell yourself as a photographer and a filmmaker where a magazine will hire you and say, oh, we want you to shoot uh, a portrait of so-and-so, but can you also do a moving video portrait of them that we can use for the, the web? See, before it was just publications, right, Jordan? Yeah. And, and now we're, we're hitting this point where we need content for both publication and web, and if you can't deliver both, you're not the best bang for you're the not, buck. Yeah, you're not, you're not of that value to us. Well, if you'll notice, um, you know, just from based on from what I know, New York Magazine, w w from its most powerful days when you were shooting for it and I was running the photo department, uh, was 50 issues a year. That was it. Now it's 26 issues a year, but they have a larger follower online than they do for print. And I don't know how long print is going to last. I don't know how long the New York Times is going to last oh, in sure. daily print. I suspect I have a, my own theory on how many issues they're going to do a week. And also, if you look at cover credits, which I've d done since I was five years old, you read, you see a Time Magazine cover credit, and it says, from a video, by, cover shot by so-and-so from a video. So you know that uh, that picture, then there's going to be an extended version of it on video. But I still contend that the t technique of getting attention stays the same. You I have to- Yeah, I agree with you on that one. I don't know. see how it would change. One question: We were talking about, you know, we used to be for magazines only. Now it's all. Over. What strategies are you using? What what, do you, what what techniques are you using? Where are you getting your pictures at? How are you perpetuating what you're doing? For me, we have so many tools nowadays. Everybody thinks that, like, you know, whenever you democratize something, it it's available to the masses. And that's the good news and the bad news. It's the good news mm -hmm. and bad news. But how do you stand out above the crowd? My question. So, yes. So now. You know, there's Instagram, there's Twitter, there's Facebook, there's all these social media platforms that you can use to just elevate yourself uh, uh, amongst the crowd. I myself don't have a huge Instagram following, but I think with the with, with the proper followers, so you know, a few photo editors follow you, all of a sudden you're on their radar every day on their feed, just checking, seeing what you're shooting, seeing what you're doing. And you know, I have you know, I create a really decent promo that I just give out when whenever I meet someone, or I just hand out, send out. What's the format of that? What are you giving them? So here, here, here's here's the thing. Everybody is living in this digital world where you see things on a screen. Now, at the end of the day, when a magazine editor is looking for you, they're looking for your photo and how it would look on print, right? So my 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 promo, I made a newsprint zine where I can hand it out with my photos on it laid out in a way where it looks like an actual like publication so that you I'm helping you visualize what my photos would look like on the on publication already so I'm taking you halfway there I'm already helping you understand further what my pictures would do for you so it's more of a helping guide along because at the end of the day, all these editors are extremely busy. I've worked as a photo editor in a few magazines, and I understand that at the end of the day, you're not, you don't have time to look at somebody's website extensively if you are busy working on this story, working on that story. You want somebody to help you help them. 
That's the likability factor, is to walk into some place and express and give evidence of the fact that you can solve their problems. People will like you. Editors will like you. Photography directors will like you. Did you learn that in his class? I'm just curious. I did. Um, <laughs> well, I, I think in general, you have to be a good person to, wor to work in this industry because if word spreads fast. If you do something bad on set or you do something that's very questionable, word will spread quickly and all of a sudden, you're not going to be working five days a week. Oh, you're, that's true. You're, you need to be a nice person. You need to be a person who is likable and not one of those people who just kind of push things in the wrong way because i you know as a photo editor i've sat at a desk answering the main line at time magazine i've had some crazy phone calls before and people calling in saying they want to show me work so i was like all right you know i'm gonna be a nice person send me an email show me the website if i like it i'll pass it on to my, to my superiors and i'm getting these uh, emails i'm getting them i'm looking at the website most of them are they haven't thought it through yet you know, the work isn't developed, the work isn't smart enough, or, you know, rarely I'll get something that's good. But if it's really good, you'll find a way to get it to, to the right person. There are so many websites like Feature Shoot, um, Photo Visura, even like VSCO, um, the visual supply company. They have a great way of just displaying your work. So if you really want to, like, show your work out there, there's ways to do it. You just have to be willing to you know, sell yourself in a way where people like it. There's ways to sell yourself on Instagram. There's ways to sell yourself on Tumblr. You just have to understand your audience and know what gets out there. Well, uh, two good things. Uh, number one, when you were a student of mine, I don't know if you recall this. I remember where you sat. I used to call you Anne Wright Zoo, not Anne Wrong. I, I, you were right about everything. And also, I think you're the most recent SVA graduate, former student of mine, that I've ever invited back to lecture my class. You just got it. You just got it. And um, it, it, it's, it's really important. It's almost like trying to teach someone to breathe. And they say, I don't need to know how to breathe. I know how to breathe. Yeah, but do you? Do you? Do you? In terms of... And also, it's a business. It just is a business. If you consider yourself just an artist, you're going to be in trouble. You have to be willing to have people skills, as he said, likability, which is what I call it, and business. And also, you do, unfortunately, have to address what you brought up earlier in terms of what is your worth and oh, what yeah. are you willing to do for either little or no money. You have to assess that and uh, ask your colleagues and find out. It's a helpful business. But the, the uh, metaphor I make is that if you were in law school, let's say you're in your senior law school, law firms would send recruiters to you to interview you and right, meet the top right, people, right. and you'd graduate from law school, and you'd become a junior partner on the masthead on their stationery. If you were a medical student, clinics and pharmaceuticals and hospitals would be sending recruiters. There are no recruiters for photographers. There are hardly any agencies hiring for, for photographers uh, except for major photo agents, and they're not going to take a chance on a newcomer. So a newcomer, you know the Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz follow the yellow brick road? There is no yellow brick road. You have to do something that creates a yellow brick, put it down, step on it, do something else that creates another brick, step on it. You have to make your own yellow brick road. Funny story, Ooh. actually. When I was in Jordan's class, um, I got one of my first assignments for a magazine, actually. Fast Company. Yes, I remember. So uh, Jordan, as part of his class, he uh, invites us to go, well, he gets us invited to certain publications that he has good uh, connections with or like good friends at. And we ended up going to Fast Company and Jordan said, hey, remember, this is a magazine that is open to using young photographers. It's open to new talent. So come with your A-game. So, well, you know, half my classmates, they decided it was, you know, oh, I, I, I have my other work to focus on. I have all these other things to do. I brought my whole damn portfolio ready to go. I edited, I had it ready, I had the presentation prepared, and two days later, the photo director calls me and says, hey, are you available to shoot something on Thursday? And I said, yes, I am. And uh, no, no, it was your first mistake. You say, for, let me check my schedule. <laughs> okay. I, have to, I have to call Anna Wintour and see if I can be free that day. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so so it was like I did, I didn't I went in just hoping somebody would look at my work and maybe give me some advice. And two days later, I get a call to go shoot something for them. And you know, Jordan 
helped me get into that process. He taught us the correct email etiquette. He taught us how to, you know, sell ourselves very, very well. And again, problem solving. You, you as a photographer are a problem solver. They have a problem. They want a photo. You're going to provide it. You have to provide the best solution possible. Well, it was kind of like our relationship. I knew that whatever I asked you to do, I was giving you the bare bones. This will get the job done. You then went and fleshed it out and dimensionalized it more. I did not tell you to rent a glider plane and photograph someone else in another glider plane from your glider plane to give evidence of the beautiful area that you were photographing, you know, this wonderful travel story. Specifically that was the your Hudson idea. Valley for a the weekend Hudson getaway. Valley, weekend getaway. Weekend getaway. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. That was your idea. I was smart enough to know that you were smart enough to carry it way beyond my vision. I'd do anything to get a free airplane plane. Oh, right. <laughs> That's exactly. really, come on. Right. It, was, it was strictly for that. Right. Um, what, one, one last question here, one more final question. Um, we're, we're talking about the business end of everything else, and the business comes down to money. And how do you value photographs these days? Because pictures are free. So here you are, you're out there working, and I'm opening up to both of you. Okay. You mentioned talking to your community, be with other people who are in the same thing and talk, and, and theoretically people will be honest with you and say what they're getting from different people and what they expect to get for different assignments. What Are, are there any other avenues to, to seek guidelines, to see starting points, to seek roughly where everyone is? I know it used to be ASMP had their suggestions, mm -hmm. of course. Uh, so where do you go today? If, if, if you're just starting out and you are – and you have people who are hiring you or want to buy your photographs, where are some good starting points to establish a basic fee for a job or an image or whatever the case may be? I believe and I stress, and I'm going to start laying it out. Uh, the reason we went to Fast Company when in uh, An Rong's class was I, I look at their work. I don't criticize anyone. I don't believe in photo criticism. But I get a consensus of what do they want. Are most of these people doing portraiture? Are most of these people doing fashion? Are they doing reportage? Are they doing uh, infrared in Central Park at night? And then I try and take them places where I know people or have contacts uh, for them to get work. And I just forgot the train of thought where I was going with Oh, this. we're talking about establishing uh, uh, rates. Editorial. You started okay. it because editorial has fixed rates. They pay a daily rate. They pay a per picture rate or a day rate or per page rate. So you don't have to kind of now, second guess. Is there guess. a place where if somebody's tuning in and they're just starting in, is there a, a, a place where they can go online to see what these basic – are there any guidelines printed or available no, anywhere? No, you have to ask. You have to ask. Okay. Well, there is a website. Oh, yeah? Ah. Oh, good. You learn from your students. It, it's called um, Who Pays Photographers. It was started by a photographer who uh, was getting confused because there were so many different uh, varying prices. So he created this list of all, what each publication pays, uh, their day rate, and they'll break it down for you so you know what exactly your day rate should be. Now, the thing is with these day rates, it varies also because like, to get a day rate, you actually have to be commissioned by the publication. If they're just picking up a picture, that's the space rate. So it depends right, correct. on like, how you get approached by it. Um, so, it's, and you also have to be aware of what, how many different usages do they, are they expecting? Is mm -hmm. it just going to be a one-shot deal, or is this going to be ongoing for, say, even an ad campaign or something? Mm -hmm. So that's also you've got your basics, and then what else? And well, that's something you have to ask. Right. This is what we're talking about: the business aspect. You yes. have to know, and and there are three things that you want to. I call them the three C's. You want credit for your work, cash for your work, and control of your work. Ooh, Who yes. owns your images? Are mm -hmm. you, is it work for hire where you take the picture, here it is, now they own it outright forever and you can't use it? Or if you're lucky, you can throw something up on your website? Or are you licensing them Big the difference. use of the picture? Yes, yes. Yeah. I ran into a photographer not long ago who had shot uh, Jennifer Lopez for a New York Magazine cover that I did. And face-to-face -face in Sam Flax's doorway, he said, you bought me a house in L.A., I said, what are you talking about? He said, resale on the Jennifer Lopez shoot. I made $350,000 <laughs> because we had a license. He licensed us one-time usage for the thing. So you've got to be careful. Now, some people will try and get you to sign a contract. Condé Nast is notorious for work for hire and getting signing a contract. 
but uh, you can uh, you it, when you just because someone puts a contract in front of you doesn't mean you have to nod and agree to sign. You can cross off certain things. That's or really important to do. And I think anybody who is starting out and you're listening to this important takeaway: Re- read the fine print. And yes, you do. There's no gun to your head. This is what they'd like right. you to agree to. Right. But it doesn't mean that they're necessarily you. Know, you can't cross things out and keep crossing out until they start balking. Right. And also, going back to something we said before, there's always going to be technological advances in photography. There was a time when someone who was shooting film in black and white, suddenly color came out. And they said, oh, color? I don't know. I I guess I got to learn how to shoot color. And then suddenly digital came out. And someone said, oh, I I guess I got to learn to do digital. And now we've got motion. There's going to be something tomorrow that none of us in this room know what it's going to be. And there's going to be something more complicated and more fluid Two weeks from now, you've got to stay abreast with it. But I still contend that, as we were talking before, problem solving and how you present yourself and how you get the trust of someone who has the possibility of presenting your art and paying you for it, um, that's going to be a given. Maybe the technique of that will change from phone calls to emails to who knows what in the future. But that that, the quality of, with your art, likability, trust, intelligence... Uh, good naturedness and business are the components that make a career. And if you just want to take pictures and not do any of those other things, marry rich and go out and take pictures for your fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that note, I think it's a perfect time to sign off. And before we do that, and can you tell us about some of your current projects, things that you have happening right now? Uh, right now, I'm working on a monthly web series called New Romantics, where I'm taking a look at modern day love through the eyes of a hopeless romantic myself. And um, (laughs) it's a web series that comes out every month and you can follow it on my Instagram, uh, which is Anrizzi, A-N-R-I-Z-Z-Y. And um, it's on my website, you can check it out. And every month it's a two to three minute short about love and the ideas of it. So yeah, check it out. Definitely we'll do that. Jordan, what are you up to these days? Well, I have a, um, I've done th- three photo-driven books, but I'm particularly most pleased with this one, and it's called Eating Delancey, A Celebration of Jewish Food. And I did it with a photographer that I had hired in 1978 as an assistant who was leaving a photographer that I had hired. But like I say, if this world is a, a populated by good people, I like to think I'm one of them, and that my co-author on the book, Aaron Resney, is certainly a good person. And it's a 234-page cocktail table book with Aaron's gorgeous photographs of the classic Ashkenazi food dishes, chopped liver, gefilte fish, and 70 essays by famous people. Joan Rivers did the introduction, and there's Itzhak Perlman, uh, Beth Midler, Jackie Mason, Don Rickles, all weighing in about their childhood experience. I've seen food. the book, and it's it, visually it's wonderful, and the essays are terrific, and uh, it's definitely a, a, a worthwhile book. It's oh, pshaw. <laughs> <laughs> well, this has been a terrific, terrific, terrific podcast, uh, very enjoyable, very informative. Um, many, many, many thanks to Jordan Shapps and Rong. And many thanks to our producer, John Harris, our engineer, Jason Tables. My name is Alan Weitz. For more photo news and reviews, check bh.com slash explorer. Follow us on Twitter at bhphotovideo and email your questions to podcast at bhphoto.com. Thank you very, very much for tuning in today. 